Hiya guys, Spectre here. Welcome to some more Total War Warhammer 3. And we are starting a new campaign since we're done with Greasers. This is the start of Wolfric's campaign. And this is also the last of the Norsk and Legendary Lords until they bring out some more. As Greasers was also the last of the Ogre Legendary Lords. So we're eliminating some factions now. They're getting um, taken out of the equation. Uh Yeah, we're going to want a growth building, as always. Okay. Now, Warfrick's armies, I like to tell them a bit differently. You do want more of the champions, but generally you want more of the champions' great weapons. Because they're a much more of a threat, because they can kill anything. And because they're well armoured, they still have quite a lot of ability against missiles. You do want armoured skin wolves. Eventually. A warmouth is optionable, optionable, but they are expensive. You don't want trolls with Wolfric, you take them with Throg. But potentially you could take Vermeer Warriors. You've got the Great Upon ones and You've got the normal ones. And both have got armor piercing and armor sundering with magical attacks, which is impressive. You want one of these guys in every army. I'll generally go with shadows for a plenish troop. You want plenish troops, obviously. And then you've got your skin wolf working guy for your training. I usually take six of these and then I'll mix and match between those and the Fimir Warriors. And then you have these guys as your scouts. And you kind of want that in every city really. So you can, um, one, have the control, but two, the Lord Recruit rank plus one, faction-wide, which is pretty handy. See, you can take things like that as six, but again, this is the thing with Norskans. Norskans are a sacking faction. You're not going to generate much money from home. So you're better off using them as recruiting provinces, in all honesty. So like, if I have these three buildings, you can stick your mammoth one in there, I suppose, for four. Make that five, that six. And I think I've got seven slots. So then you could take one of these, because you don't want to keep this. You just want it for the... Um, the growth so you can have that one to make recruiting a bit cheaper give you some more local recruitment as well or that one for the extra recruitment ranks but then again i suppose i've got that as well But yeah, don't, don't worry so much about making money with um, your Norsk and things. The only things that make decent money, in all honesty, is um, your ports. I 
And these things do gear increases to some of the units. But I generally try and come back for those later on. What's part of this province that I'm not okay. I love how I lose almost my entire army against his army. <laughs> love it. Not straight into the Spearman unit. Why have they got to get so close? Just fire at the fucking marauders. Jesus Christ. Him down. I'm hoping I should be able to take over his tribe, but
just in case I can't. I want to make sure that he's got as few units as possible for the potential second fight. There we go. Upkeep fifteen percent Lord's army, that's really good. And he's in perfect vigour. There's no point really taking that one. I mean the minus five enemy leadership is not bad. But the cause of terror, you get a war mammoth. You get terror with that. So that's kinda stupid. Pop that one on for the growth for the time being. We're not at war with the Varg, so I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Yes. I find your motives unclear. Which master do you serve? But I am at war with these. I'm basically, I'm going to show you guys more or less really the best way, I would say, to play the Norskans in this campaign. You don't want to be looking to conquer all the north, and to be fair, the further that way that you go, the more chance you've got of encountering both um, Kislev and the Chaos Dwarves. Chaos Dwarves could be an ally, but they also might not be. And they're not factions you really need to encounter, unless you're going to go and sack their shit. But like occupying Kislev's capital, Kislev's capital is crap. It doesn't give you anything really good. If you look at um, your tech trees, look at your tech trees and look at what they offer you for occupying certain cities. Kislev, minus 33% attrition, so from all attrition. Immune psychology and unit mass plus 15%. It's nothing special. I see this one, Gork and Mork. More wins magic for all your armies. Immune to climate, sea, corruption and storm attrition. But income post battle loot plus fifty percent. That's massive. Upkeep fifteen percent reduction there for Tilly, which is also really good. Your research as well if you've still got a lot to do. Um 
income from trade if you've got trade partners that's a pretty big bonus if you get trade agreements cultural punishment rate is always going to be good so it's just it's looking at where you're going to get them and then bear in mind that these ones give you 50 percent more from sacking for the factions mentioned So what I normally do is really, I go straight for the, like, that one gives me 10% sacking there. That's 10% more post-battle loot. You get 10% more post-battle loot there as well, with the tiller you want. that one marauders which includes marauder champions so your marauder champions lose another 10 percent upkeep there so they're becoming quite cheap at this point um obviously you get 20 percent more sacking here which is really good 10 percent more post battle loot there More post battle loot there as well. So you're going to get a lot of money as well also from battles. That's the other thing. Oh, they've added in Chaos Dwarves now. Ward save 6% when fighting against Chaos Dwarves. Okay. Plus 35% for some of buildings, not bad. You're getting growth at the very end of your tree. See, I don't agree with that. That's good. It's okay. And, well, you're not really using those, but whatever. I mean, I suppose they're scouts, so you're gonna, always going to have some scouts. But growth, 25. And it's the very end of the tech tree. Growth is something you want early on. Not something you want later on. That should be like 25% more income or something, or 25% more experience for all units or something like that. You need something that's more for the long term. And obviously every now and then units are going to die, so you are going to be replacing them with other units. But growth is kind of stupid. I mean, alright, you might occupy the new city here and there, and obviously you're going to sack it first. But at most that's going to go down to tier 3 if it's tier 5. And you're not occupying like towns and stuff like that. You're only occupying like coastal towns if they've got a port, obviously, for money wise. And then you're occupying certain cities if it unlocks technology. And then you're looking to hold that city down. Because what I'll normally do is I have one or two offensive armies. The rest of my armies are defensive. They will sit in that city and stay near that city pretty much the entire game. All they're doing is bolstering the garrison and making sure that I don't lose that city. Because if you lose the city, and if you've the technology, I think you lose the technology as far as I'm aware. It's, it's temporarily disabled until you reclaim the city. Or I'm not sure if it works the same way as Lizardmen, where they've got to have like a certain building built. And when the certain building is built, you can then do the research. So when you occupy a city, you then can do the research. If the research is then done, I'm not sure if you need to maintain the city or not. We'll have to find that out. Because I haven't really played Norskans in quite a long while. Because they're not one of my favourite factions. But they're definitely the best sacking faction in the game. But that's why you don't really want to be at home. You want to be abroad. Because if you look at... This is what you've got to take, take into account is... Look at the factions that you get 50% more sacking from. Bretonia, Southern Kingdoms, Dwarves. Empire, Kislev, Vampire Count Greenskins, Dark Elf, High Elf, Lizardmen, Skaven, Tomb Kings, Vampire Coast. Well, 
that actually there just says Kathy. Really, it should say Kathy Chaos Dwarves and Ogres, is what it should say. But that the, all those benefits are for sacking factions that are further away. The closest ones probably going to be Empire and Kislev, and then they're probably Bretonians. The bulk of the other factions are further away, but none of them are Norskans. None of them are Warriors of Chaos. Because they're the ones you want as allies. They're not the ones you want as enemies. You want to be further afield. And obviously, you get your 10% sacking there. Um, you get 20% there. And then you've got 50 here. So you've got 70% there straight away. Then you have 15% sacking there. So you're going up to, what, 85%? I'm pretty sure there's something I'm missing somewhere. If it's not on this, then it's back on the tech tree. Or actually, no, I know what it is. I know what it is. It's not. It's a... Uh, it's a thing. It's an ancillary. You can get an ancillary that gives you... I think it's 10 or 15% more sacking or something like that. It's an ancillary item. That's what it is. Who's the leader of that tribe? Islam Dahl, so it's him that's there. Okay. Because there he's got what? Seven? Seven, he's got fourteen. Is my realm. Mm. Even then, I don't really want trade, I'd rather have non aggression. That's what I really want. takes all my money because I know my look and he'll probably end up declaring war on me rather than declaring war on the Bretonians what well, one thing there's not a slider for is anti-player bias because if, if there were the anti-player bias would be going into fucking middle for me <laughs> really works the anti-player bias sometimes is absolutely stupid especially when they walk past an enemy army or an enemy town or city to come straight for the player. And it's like you just walked past someone you're at war with. To come and attack the player. I hate it when they do that. It's like no. No. General or anyone with any common sense. Would walk past an enemy to come and attack another enemy.
I'll upgrade that first, definitely. Yeah, the one I'll probably go down, I'll probably go down this one. For Kilgore Slay, I mean. Because he's an extremely deadly champion. So you can stick him in there. You don't want him in Wolfric's army, you want him in the second or third army. Because, um. Your brother chieftains are shit. The only time they're actually okay is if when they're on Mammoth. And even then the stats are obliterated. And because the. Marauder chieftains. They don't have a. Conventional. Um, skill, uh, uh, yellow skill tree like this so they can't buff up some of their stats they've just got these four stupid god tree things because they're a melee fighter they should definitely have this at base I don't know why they haven't I don't know what Sia were thinking because then at least you can up your melee defense by 12 up your melee attack by 12 potentially up your melee attack or defense by another 12 on this side over here you can pump up your leadership more health, more damage um, a bit more armour, you know, but you, you can't do that because you've not got it. So you're very, very limited in what you can do with them. And until they're on a mammoth, they're probably one of the weakest melee lords, if not the weakest melee lord in the game. And bear in mind, melee lords haven't got access to, like, magic and stuff, or, like, really powerful abilities. So it'd make more sense they had that to make themselves a bit more viable because at the moment they're not. If there was a spellcasting alternative, I'd probably take the spellcaster instead. But all you get is these. I mean, his is not bad. Enemy leadership, minus five in local region. He's got minus three. He's got an inferior version. So it affects all enemies in the local region that he's in. That's not bad. He's now got 12 plus the garrison. Yeah, I can't take that. What savage condition on this? Ten level two allegiance with any god, occupy, loot, raise, or sack thirty-five different settlements. That's completely fine. So you've got to get to level two at least. So that one's pretty good as well. So you get a buff here, just like Throg gets his buff for his trolls. He gets a buff for skin wolves. So 15 more melee defense, 15 more charge bonus, which is really good. So you do want, I would say, a, a good six units of skin wolves in your army. What I do is I mix and match the um, main line with these. So I'll take... Some of those with maybe some with the shields. See, so you've got some that are a bit more durable against ranged. With these, I don't know if there's much point in the the normal ones. So they've got the same armor. And they've got five less damage. 
Personally, they should do more damage. I'm a piercing 64. What's theirs at? There's 59. So the final damage you've got is also the armor piercing damage. You get missile distance 25% and then they can have 20% missile distance if the leadership is above 50% of base. So basically they've got 45% missile resistance. Which they again have the same thing. So in terms of these two, the only reason to take these ones, I think they're cheaper. Yeah, they're 363, they're 325. So you're better off just taking those ones. They're anti-large, actually. But these aren't anti-infantry, as far as I'm aware. Or oh, these actually do get bonus versus infantry. So that's that's the difference, then. That's the difference I've been looking for. And they've got more melee defence. They've both got 30 melee attack. They've got 42 melee defence. They've got 32 melee defence. But these are anti-large and these are anti-infantry. But your skin wolves are also anti-large and they're very, very good anti-large. But I suppose skin wolves don't have armor piercing, are they? But they have got frenzy. But these have got armor piercing. So I suppose they could be good against armoured large targets. But I suppose then you could take a mix. So you could take a mix of these as well. You could take a, like a few units of those and a few units of those. And sort it out and balance it out. No the only thing I just don't take in these, I just don't take trolls. So if you're going to take trolls, you want to play throg. Um, so I, I steer away from trolls in this. What's his thing on these actually as well as Red Tree? Because that's your more of champions there, melee attack weapon strength that you get. That one includes your skin wolves. It's this one fear for male warriors and your mammoths. And they get six more melee attack and defense, which is pretty good. So you could potentially need three in your red tree. But I'd buff skin wolves before you buff the male warriors. Because skin wolves kind of basically act like your cavalry. And there you get an arm and melee defense and physical resistance, which is always good. That will buff you for me as India mammoths again. You get armor, weapon strength, and an 8% ward save. And that one buffs your skin wolves. Melee attack, weapon strength, and charge bonus. You can definitely put three points into those though. That's no problem there. He's going to come out as with a 420 stack, which is fine. Where's my next we don't number him.
Right, what we'll do is, we'll set the groundwork for it anyway. We've got rid of that first guy. This guy's going to come at us probably when he's got a full 20 stack. When he, when, he, when he does, we've got to beat him. We've just got to make sure we kill that guy. If we kill him, we take all his territory. And I don't really want to be pushing any further. I just want to try and get my army sorted as quickly as I can. Get a second army here to defend the monolith of your kill bloody hand. And then I want to get my first army Warfric into the water. And they're going to go sacking. That's what they need to go and do. That's how you then build up your treasury. You'll probably quite often run Norskans into the red. It doesn't matter as long as you've got like thousands and thousands in your treasury. You're going to be fine. And because they can get so much money from post-battle loot as well as sacking, you get a crap ton of money. You've just got to keep winning battles. Right, I'm going to leave this part here. hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, leave a like. If you're new around here, please subscribe. I will leave the playlist link in the top of the description. But obviously this is the first part for now. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Take care everyone and I'll speak to you all soon.